So today's guest is Madhur Daga. Madhur is the MD of Orient Bell, a public company with a valuation of over 700 crore rupees. He runs ultra marathons, practices vipassana meditation, and is one of the most vibrant, high energy and dedicated people I know. In today's episode, we talked about the importance of meditation in his life, how he turned struggles into incredible opportunities, and the power of routine, and how it can help you rise from the lowest point of your life. For now, take a deep breath and enjoy the show. You know, the first time I met you was, I think, around 2006, 2007 on the golf course. Uh, and I remember that story very fondly because uh, I met you through a common friend who's also our dear, dearest friend. And uh, we started playing, uh, playing about nine holes and the goal was to get to the end of the round. Um, and as we started playing, I had just finished off playing professional golf. So my aura and my zone was to be focused, calm, shoot my score, be the best version, you know, all of that. And yours was, I have come to come to come to I have come to chill on the golf course. That was your goal. And I very clearly remember, and I know I've told you this story, that after nine holes, I told my friend, this motor mouth who can't keep his mouth shut and can't zip it up for even a couple of seconds when I'm even putting. So that's you in 2006. And then we fast forward more recently, actually mostly post lockdown when we caught up. And there was this really calm and collected version of you where I saw you talk much less. Uh, usually you have about 150 words in a second. Now you have <laughs> about 150 words in a minute. So there's a completely different version of you. So let's talk a little bit about what really has changed from then to now. Of course, many things, but for me, what I really want to talk about is the meditation aspect of it. And I know that you're practicing Vipassana. So let's talk, let's talk a little bit more about that. Okay. So let me begin by thanking you, Pragya. Um, this podcast is very special for me as well. Not only for all of the reasons that you've mentioned, I won't go over all of them. We've had some amazing history, great friendship. But apart from all of that, this is also my first podcast. So for me to be doing my first podcast and to be helping you launching yours is a great privilege. So thank you. A lot of gratitude to you. And um, apart from the fact that this is your podcast and I'm so happy to be here, another huge catalyst for me there was the entire conversation is on mental health, is on meditation. And um, that is something very important to me. It's very important to me and it's a part of my daily life. And uh, the other thing I realized while you were telling me what you were, while you were introducing me, and thank you for that great introduction, is that there are not that many people now who I choose to spend time with who've known me since 2006, seven. And the reason is because a lot of those folks have not moved on into a mentality that I want to be around. So uh, you are one of those few people who've seen me when I was very different, uh, exactly who you said I was on the golf course. But also now you know me probably even better. And I've also made a very clear choice to be around someone like you. Um, so that's just very interesting because it's not that often that I get to spend time with someone who's seen me 180 degrees from where I am today. Um, so thank you for having me. Now, in terms of uh, you asking me about um, what has changed, of course, a lot has changed. But the single biggest driver for change in my life has been Vipassana meditation. Vipassana meditation for me started in 2016 January. Before I talk about meditation, I do want to mention that, and I think you will agree with this, if someone put out a list in 2006-7 of the folks who are least likely to go into meditation, I think I would be right on top. For sure. So the reason this is important is because a lot of people who feel they don't need meditation a lot of people who feel meditation is not for them, they could not be further from the truth. They don't know it yet. 
They haven't had the trigger yet. But uh, you know what I feel and I know you feel the same way. Everyone in this world can meditate. Whether it's for five minutes or five hours is a different issue. Everyone can meditate. But the key point here is everyone needs to meditate whether you know it or not. That is important. The very blessed and lucky people like me and you realize early on we need this. We should do this. Some of the people who are not that lucky or maybe are not that open-minded keep fighting it, keep resisting it. And that I don't think is the smartest way to live life. No, I couldn't agree more. And you're spot on when you say that you were on, you were bottom of that list probably. Uh, and again, a, a fun anecdote, which is I remember back in the day, we were having this conversation about going on a golf trip together. Uh, and, you know, we generally were talking and you were like, but you meditate, you don't drink water, no, no, you're going to be very boring, I'm not going to be with you for a golf trip, right? I remember. And now when you look at the life choices that you are making every day, um, I have seen your routine change drastically for, from when we used to be partying till 4 a.m. to now where you actually wake up at 4 a.m. and, uh, you know, go out and, you know, do your running and do your meditation. So tell me about... How are you on a daily basis making the right choices? You spoke about choices, right? This, yes. These are, you know, significant inflection points that people make in their lives. I'm going to start meditating. I'm going to become a marathon runner or the career choices we make. But eventually those choices take shape or you can see impact in your life because you're making the smaller changes every day, right? Okay. And I've seen you make those smaller changes. So help me understand, one, how have you made those changes? Um, how has meditation become such an integral uh, you know, part of your life that that has become the driving factor? So um, let's talk a little bit about the, some of the fundamentals of the type of meditation I do. As you know, I do Vipassana meditation. And I mentioned 2016 January was my first course. Um, this is not a deep dive into Vipassana. We are not getting into the technique. But basically it's that... 10, 11 day course where you're silent, it's very strict, you're meditating 11, 11 and a half hours a day, very, very tough routine. So first of all, you just dive into that. And um, that kind of opens your world into what self discipline, patience, the tip of the iceberg and being able to master your mind. That's what Vipassana is. So I finished my first course. And a lot of people do Vipassana, but some people benefit more than others. And I believe the, the root cause of someone benefiting more or less is not because the Vipassana course is any different for anyone. It's what happens when you leave the course. Broadly, you have two choices. One, you practice and the practice tapers off. So, as a boost ka hangover, hota hai, vipashna ka bhi hangover. Hota hai. <laughs> Do hafte, teen hafte rehta hai. And then, if you don't practice, you are kind of back to square one. In two, three months, you are back to square one. And you just have this tick on your CV. Mene vipashna ka course kar liya. What does it mean? You've done a course. You've done a tough course. Good job. Has it made an impact on your life? Maybe for four or five weeks. That's broadly choice one. Choice two. You leave the course and you commit to yourself, as it is mentioned in the course, ek saal tak to practice karo. Jo unka recommended daily practice hai. Agar ek saal karoge, the chances are high that a habit has formed. So I am very blessed, I'm sorry, I'm very blessed, very grateful that I chose the second path of doing the practice every day, which I continue to do till now seven years after my first course. So the first big thing with meditation in me is, it isn't about a course for 10 or 11 days. It's about living life because of the practice. Ab jaise is saal, I'm going to go for Vipassana only once at the end of December. I have a lot of other physical fitness goals. And to be honest, I'm not able to fit Vipassana in. That's a separate conversation, but nahi ho paega. Main pure saal nahi karunga. But it's not going to make me less of who I am because I'm meditating every day. So that is number one. Number two, what I've realized is the more you meditate, 
अ वेरी ह्यूज कॉन्सेप्ट बिकम्स वेरी क्लियर टू यू इंटेलेक्चुअली ये सबको समझ आता है एक्चुअली अंदर से टू अंडरस्टैंड फ्रॉम योर सब कॉन्शियस इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट एंड दैट इज यू आर द रूट कॉज ऑफ योर हैप्पीनेस एंड सैडनेस इंटेलेक्चुअली सब बोलते हैं ऑब्वियसली यार बट देन वेरी क्विकली आफ्टर दैट यूल से तूने मेरा ये बिगाड़ दिया तूने ये कर दिया a true meditator understands that i am the root cause of my happiness and sadness so i say this because every day i understand the choices i make are the reason why i'm going to have a better day or not because the only control i have are on the choices i can make yeah i have zero control on the choice you will make i have zero control on the choice that anyone will make but i can control my choices the problem is people don't control their choices and it's very difficult to look at yourself so you look outwardly and blame everything else meri paristhitiyan itni kharab hai kitni anchahi baatein hoti rehti hain kaash ye nahi hota kaash wo nahi hota a meditator says all that is really not relevant what can i do so that has been a great driver because i've practiced every day it's now just become part of who i am i am responsible for happiness i am responsible for my sadness i have to make that choice if i choose incorrectly i will face that consequence if i miss a workout i will have regret to me regret is the heaviest emotion in the world because you can't go back in time and fix it so this is how meditation has made a huge different huge difference to all aspects of my life because i understand i am in charge of who i am nobody else the sooner we really understand this mental health becomes a lot easier because you can take responsibility on yourself if you don't choose to take responsibility on yourself tum zindagi bhar yahi karte rahoge uske karan iske karan ye hua wo hua no no absolutely and i kind of get uh, what you're saying because you know you know i meditate and i also have i meditate and follow the heartfulness uh, you know way of method of of meditation and you're so right about the fact that people tend to taper off and it's not a habit uh, because it's tough it's difficult uh, you have to make those choices for yourself and sometimes you know like you've also said in the past that these are not choices that that you can go and show off about you know if i go to the gym every day i have something to show for it people can see you know i have great biceps i'm fitter i've lost weight or you know if i go to the salon people can see i've had a beautiful haircut but this inner journey is something which is extremely private and personal in many ways but also it manifests in personal relationships but it takes time because for other people also to meet you where you are in that moment is very difficult they also walk in with a number of biases and prejudices but coming back to the fact that making meditation a habit one thing that's been easy for me at least in heartfulness is just the simplicity of it you know you can meditate anywhere at any time um there's no specific posture that you need to follow and i think that has made me make it a habit in a lot far more easily than i have heard my friends talk about vipassana and i just want to sort of delve into your 10 days your first 10 days or even your most recent 10 days in sikkim by the way beautiful i was there fantastic yes, sikkim is beautiful amazing uh, mm. state and mm. would recommend people to go and uh, visit it but coming back to the meditation tell me a little bit more about how grueling are those 10 days and what does that journey look like the day 1 the day 5 the day 10 and then of course you know we'll go into the rest of it but tell me a little bit more about that So before I get into that you mentioned something that I would like to spend a couple of minutes on which is on you kind of highlighted physical fitness and the sexiness of it versus mental health you're absolutely right it's one of the favorite things that I tell people that a six pack looks nice but a sorted mind is not something you can immediately see I want to add to that by saying it's very difficult to hide a lack of physical fitness if you're obese If you have no muscle, if you get sick, if you have a big tummy, it's easy you can tell. But let's talk about mental health. Let's assume at this moment the person opposite me is dying in grief. I'm going to ask him how are you? What are they going to say? I'm awesome. I'm great man. Life is amazing. 
बंदा मर रहा है लेफ्ट राइट फटी हुई है उसकी इट्स सो इजी टू कवर अप मेंटल हेल्थ एंड दैट्स व्हाट पीपल डू बिकॉज इट्स अ वेरी डार्क प्लेस फिजिकल फिटनेस इज फन आई बीन ऑन सोशल फॉर द लास्ट थ्री इयर्स it's fun you see tan bodies sexy bodies hot lighting gym all of that transformation upon transformation mental health transformations are very very rare because there's nothing much to see it's not tangible it's an intangible biceps and quads are tangible compassion gratitude these are intangible virtues so i think that's just something about mental health which is very important for people to know that while it is not tangible while it's not sexy it is what drives us it is critical for our well being you know you can live longer they say you can have a good health span you can have a good life span but do you want to be happy doing it do you want to be peaceful living longer tumne bicep tricep sab kuch bana liya you have great muscles but you're just not happy you're angry you're a bitter human being your quality of life is not going to be happy um i've read a lot about there are these certain regions in the world called blue zones blue zones are people where the average age is a lot higher than those of other regions in the world you are approaching 95 100 there are a couple of these re- uh, you know regions in in japan and a big part of that is community a big part of that is their ability to share their mental health that you know part of ikigai which is community it's not only the meaning of your life but you you understand that you're in this together so that's just something i wanted to add to what you said about physical versus mental health coming back to vipashna there's no easy way to put this my first course in igatpuri dhammagiri in igatpuri in january 2016 was excruciating it was excruciating because that's how badly i needed it i didn't understand it then for someone who's 100 kilos overweight going and running 5 kilometers is going to be excruciating i ran 26 kilometers yesterday i'm fine uh it's mental health my mental health was was poor in so many ways but i could cover it up as most people do which is why it was excruciating i couldn't wait to go back home um i know you will find this hard to believe especially you but being silent for 10 days wasn't the biggest deal because you are not singled out for silence everyone is silent so kisse baat karoge इट्स नॉट कि मधुर डागा तुम नहीं बात कर सकते हो और सब कर सकते हैं नो डिस्क्रिमिनेशन देर साइलेंस वॉज द लीस्ट ऑफ माई वरीज नॉट हैविंग माई फोन यू जस्ट सिटिंग विद माई आईज क्लोज बिकॉज देर सो मच एंग्जाइटी देर सो मच रेस्टलेसनेस इट्स सो डिफिकल्ट टू लेट गो सो आई इट वॉज एक्सक्रूशिएटिंग एंड आई एम वेरी ब्लेस्ड आई एम वेरी ग्रेटफुल आई एम वेरी थैंकफुल दैट ड्यू टू माई ओन एफर्ट due to the effort of a couple of dhamma sevaks there i i managed to get through and uh you know there's this saying that uh, for those who want to give light you have to endure burning it was it was one of the toughest things i've ever done in fact probably the toughest thing i've ever done in my adult life is do that vipassana course which brings me to your point of the meditation you do could be relatively easier vipassana is more difficult i cannot comment on any other meditation because i am not aware hame vipassana mein sikhate hain hum koi cheez ki ninda nahi karte hain we don't condemn anything so we don't know but vipassana everyone who does meditation does not have to do vipassana you don't have to do a 10 day course it's not for everyone you don't have to practice an hour or two a day it's not for everyone the first 3 and a half days of a vipassana course we do something called anapan anapan we do 11 hours a day it's the simplest meditation you are aware of your breathing the reason we do this is because we are preparing our mind to receive vipassana on the fourth day when you leave the course you are taught agar tumhe vipassana karni hai to din mein ek do ghante practice karoge but for people who only want to do anapan you can do 10 minutes a day morning and evening now i don't know like i said i can't comment on heartfulness meditation but if someone was to make a case to me ki 10 minutes a day morning and evening is too much for my mental health then my answer to that person would be mental health is not a priority for you 
because if mental health is a priority for you 20 minutes split 10 minutes a day morning and evening of the let's say 18 hours a day or 17 that you're awake is and can be invested so to answer your question vipassana is tough but it doesn't have to be vipassana or nothing there is a very basic thing which is anapan breathing awareness meditation which one can do 10 minutes a day morning and evening and the great news pragya is any meditation is better than no meditation nobody can say 10 minute mein kya hoga jo 10 minute mein hoga bahut hoga kyunki abhi tum 0 minutes kar rahe ho yeah absolutely i think without doubt um and I think the reason I brought in heartfulness was only to exactly talk about the or illustrate what you were saying, which is there are so many different methods to get there. Yes. And I think the core of this conversation or even the reason why I'm doing this podcast is exactly this, where I want through storytelling or through these conversations with inspiring people like you be able to tell people or inspire people to meditate and say, do, you don't have to do 10 days, 20 days or years, but just start today. Try it. Start making that relationship with yourself. Start your inner journey because that is going to manifest in so many different ways. It's going to make you a better person, which means it's going to make you a better, uh, you know, show, you'll show up better in your corporate life. You'll show up better in your personal life, in everything and wherever you show up, right? It's just going to be much better. And that just brings me to the various hats you wear right you're you're an md of uh, of a public listed company orient bell uh, you know you're a marathoner uh, we used to play so much golf together earlier and now you're also a, a content creator almost edging towards being an influencer which i absolutely love i love your content and i've had so many of my friends ping me every time we posted a story together saying oh my god your friends with daga he's so cool so you have so certain kind of um folks who want to listen to your content and hear you out. Um, but I want to understand how you maintain balance in all these different facets that you have signed up and you show up for all of them with 100% of commitment. So how do you do that each day? I mean, super inspiring for me. Uh, but, you know, tell me more. So, um, yes, I do wear a lot of hats. But I want to, I, this is a great question because a lot of people ask me this. And there's only, there's only so much you can say on a DM or in a reel. In a podcast, you can go into a little bit more of a deep dive with this. So the, the most important thing to understand is that this balance did not happen overnight. When I first started doing Vipassana, I wasn't doing any of this. Before I was doing Vipassana, there was very little balance in my life. So for me, balance has to also start with a priority. There is no balance in my life that everything is equally balanced. I have to have a priority. So my priority is work has to be on autopilot. Work has to be going well. Because that is the plate I eat in. You cannot shit in the plate that you eat in. So if work is not going where I want it to go, I'm very cognizant of the fact that I can't lead the life that I want to lead. For example, you know, twice in my life, now thrice, I've left one month at a time with my phone off. I go do two back-to-back -back Vipassana courses. I phone on karta ek tak. But I can't be sitting in a dhamma meditating, thinking about my PNL, about my stock, about my market cap, about my leaders, how they are performing. So this has been a journey filled with many mistakes, filled with many learnings. But I've gotten to a point where I'm very comfortable letting go of the fact that while I'm the owner of the business, I'm comfortable that I don't run it day to day. This has also come from meditation. Meditation does a lot to, to lower the ego, to dissipate the ego. What the ego says is, I'm Malik. I do everything. I do it. I As you know with meditation, you get a little bit away from the I do it. So that has helped me understand that Work is a lot bigger and broader than me. Interesting, funny story. I finished my first meditation. I told you, end of January 2016. And I remember the first person I called was my mom, spoke to mom and dad. 
and then I called my executive assistant, Hani Panwar. I remember to this day, I'm in the cab going from Dhammagiri near Nasik to Bombay. And I'm having a conversation. One thing which I didn't tell you is 90% of my first 10 days, I was crying. I was in tears. All of this emotion never dealt with my who I was, all of that. So I'm feeling very calm. I'm speaking to Hani Panwar and I ask her, So Hani, is everything okay? Yes, everything okay. So what happened? No, everything is okay, absolutely. And I'm beginning to understand that I don't have to do anything for 12 days and nothing changes. And tell me all. I don't know what to ask her because she's saying, Mom, Dad, they are okay. Basically, to put it very bluntly, I was not missed at work. To be very, very fair and brass tacks. Now, someone with a very high ego can be very upset about this. I think I was mildly upset. That, man, it's my company. Now, it's been 12 days of meditation. So, I don't have any concept. So, intellectually, I don't practice it. It's my company. It's my company. I'm going to bring all of them. No one told me that I wasn't here. I don't know what I was expecting. Because I'm going to sing a song for me. I don't know what I was expecting. But I was kind of disappointed. Then it took me some time to understand that, wow. This is a big compliment for you. So fast forward to now, the best compliment I get now, Pragya, is when people say, Tu bada vela insaan hai yaar. Tu din bar Instagram pe reels banata hai. Haan, mein banata hoon. But tu to MD hai. Haan, mein MD bhi hoon. Tu bhaagta rehta hai din bar. Triathlon bhi karta hai. This is the best compliment for me. Because I have figured out a way to make my work on autopilot growing. Could it grow X percent more if I was deeply involved 16 hours a day? Yes. But in economics, we learn diminishing marginal utility. Those extra X crores are not going to make me happy. My company is on a good track. People are happy. I have their respect. That's all I want. I don't want the second house or the fourth car or the third this. I'm not like that. I don't have 10 kids I need to put through school. I have none. So it's, it's not relevant for me. What's relevant is, I need to be happy. So to answer your question, balance started with me making sure work is on the right trajectory. Now that work is on the right trajectory, what do I want? I want to meditate, I do that. Physical fitness, not from the days when you met me, now physical fitness is very, very important to me. It's important to me because meditation has taught me awareness, self-awareness. I don't look at your six pack, I look at mine. I'm like, I'm doing what I'm Mental health is okay, physical health is So I've invested a lot of time in that. Mental health has taught me that the root of good health is nutrition. I have to be aware of that. So I take care of my nutrition. The trigger has been mental health. So my balance is work is going well and the rest of my day is spent very selfishly taking care of me that I'm happy. Meditators actually are very selfish people. Very, very selfish people. But Buddha taught selfish, selfless love. You cannot be selfless without being selfish. So I have this balance. I wear so many hats because the first person I think of to make happy is me. And when I'm happy, I can transmit that happiness to my mom, to my dad, to you, to anyone else. If I'm not selfish and I'm not happy, Ghanta mein tumhe happy karunga. Absolutely. How can I transmit happiness to you when I have a vacuum inside of me? So my balance, all the hats I wear are hats that make me happy. And I do it because I love it. There is no gun to my head. There is no gun saying I, I have to do the ultra and Ladakh. I have to do this. Koi gun nahi hai. I do this. In fact, there are opposite guns. My mom and dad are always like, Beta, tum 50 saal ke ho ho. Ye kya kar rahe ho? I'm like, mom, you know, that's the whole struggle. But, so that's the balance here. I enjoy it. I don't fight with it. But it started with work. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people like to assume ki usko parva nahi hai. It's quite the opposite. Mujhe parva hai. That is why the people running the, the show at work are better qualified to do that than me. That also stems from meditation. It's not easy to look at someone and say, you are better at running the company that I own. So please go do it. It's not easy here. 
No, absolutely. And, you know, I've seen you back in the day where you used to be putting in 16 hours and stressed about work. And that was the most important thing. And, you know, in general, I have also seen you from a personality type to change from being highly controlling to letting go, which absolutely. you spoke about. Absolutely. And just tell me a little bit more about the leadership style that has changed, right? Because now you're yes. letting go more. You have smarter people competent people leading your business so you have this freedom to do and achieve the life goals that you have set out your, for your own self so tell me a little bit more about one your leadership style two how have people in your office changed or how do they receive you from being because you've changed yourself so much right from saying calling honey 20 times a day ki kya chal raha hai kaisa hai mere calendar pe kya hai to now where you call her after 20 days and she's like Sab theek chal rahe, and you're also calm about it and you put the phone down and you're like great now I can go run my marathon right so talk a little bit more about that uh, leadership style I think a lot of people again I get this a lot that or I get a lot of DMs that uh, I wish we had a boss like you and I'm like man be careful what you want no you don't want they don't boss want like bosses you. like you a meditator <laughs> is not someone who says, come screw me over. I am meditating. That's not what meditation teaches you. Meditation teaches you compassion. It teaches you gratitude. It teaches you awareness. But it also teaches you to see things how they are. Not as how you want them to be. You see things as they are. So if you see someone at work who is not doing well, I now find it much easier to go tell someone I'm not happy with who you are at work because it always comes out with compassion. It doesn't come out in anger and bitterness. So I'm actually more forceful at work now while being calmer, if that makes sense. Totally. Uh, so one of the big things that has changed in my leadership style is that I don't raise my voice anymore. I don't feel the need to. I don't feel the need to do that. I feel the need to communicate very clearly and tell people, this is what I wanted from you. If there's something that I wasn't able to communicate, let me know. Otherwise, we are not on the right path. That's number one. Number two, meditation teaches you to let go. Meditation, a big impact of meditation is the very technique teaches you to let go. So I may be very upset with you at work for something, but when we move on, we move on. It's done. It's over. I did not have that ability. You may have seen this in golf with me. If I make a triple bogey on hole one, I'll carry that with me for another five holes. Now it's done. It's over. That's not easy to do when you're not a meditator. Number three, once a month, I run a meditation session, Anapan, 15 minutes at my corporate office. In fact, that day for this month is tomorrow. So people also receive me as the managing director, but they also see me as a meditator. They see me as a triathlete. They see me as a marathon runner. They see me practice what I preach. Practicing what you preach, I think, is what leadership is. You know, they say leadership is not a position, it's a service. You are serving people as a leader. And you serve by showing the way, by acting a certain way. So I meditate with them. Jab hamari koi, you know, a lot of companies, when they want to get a motivational speaker, we do that too. They invite external people, we do that. More often than not, I get asked. So they see me as that as well. So the respect comes in with your behavior. How do you act with them? I'm also blessed that I, I like being around people. I could be the managing director of a company, but I can just be with you as who you are. That's... You call it a gift, you call it whatever. And, you know, meditation highlights that. I saw a very nice reel the other day. It was one of the most beautiful reels. I'm forgetting who made this reel. Uh, huh, it was an African-American comedian. I'm forgetting the name. And uh, someone asked him, what is the impact that money has on people? Because you, this comedian, came from a typical African-American background where... 20 kids, mom kicking your ass, nowhere to sleep, to now a private jet. And you know what he said, Pragya? He said, money makes you more of who you really are. If you're an asshole, 
more money will make you a bigger asshole. If you're a kind, compassionate human being, more money will make you a more kind and compassionate human being. Meditation has worked that way for me as well. I, uh, I feel I'm a kind human being, but sometimes you don't know how to be kind to people. You just don't know. You don't know how to put action to the thought. Meditation allows you that. Because meditation gives you this shield of not caring ki lo kya sochenge. So, sochenge or sochenge. Again, I'm in charge of my feelings. To me sochna hai ki mein XYZ hoon socho hai. Mein kya kar sakta hoon. Mein jo karunga karunga. So, leadership has changed significantly. I think there's a lot of respect. There's a lot of gratitude and compassion. And there's a lot of leading by example. I don't go to finance meetings and rip apart balance sheets anymore. That's why I have a CFO. I don't go into aaj itni tile kyon kam biki. That's why we have a CEO. I don't go into manufacturing mein meri quality yield 0.1% kyon kam hui. That's not my job. My father always taught me if you are going to do the job of your juniors take their salary. Unki salary lo phir. So work has been a huge change for me. It causes zero stress to me. And unlike 2016, I love the fact that I am, I play a small, very valuable role at work. I love that. I don't feel the need that I have to be the center of attention at work or anywhere else. I know you don't want to believe this, but <laughs> I, I still want to believe that whether it comes or not, I don't know, but I don't need that. No, absolutely. Uh, so, firstly, some great nuggets in there for lots of us who are wanting to become leaders and the role that meditation can help us in even unlocking that. Um, second thing, I loved what you said about accentuating the qualities that we have because when you have money, more often than not, money having money is perceived as having power, which then sometimes brings in various other aspects, which is this you know, sort of uh, freedom to do whatever you think you want to do. And for some people, it's being the bigger asshole. For some people, like you, it's becoming more kinder, more empathetic, having deeper, meaningful relationships with your employees, with your people, with your friends. And the third thing which I want to go a little bit deeper on is the fact that you said earlier when you used to play golf and you'd make a triple bogey, you'd sulk, you'd carry it with you. But I saw a completely different side of you when it came to Iron Man. And, you know, I was very um, privileged to be part and part of that journey with you, where I was with you in Goa when you ran your first Iron Man. And, uh, you know, I still remember you, we were all so excited. We were there rooting for you. Uh, we really wanted you because you'd put in so much effort. We really wanted you to finish. And, uh, you know, we were there to flag off and you you know, ran excitedly into the sea, which I could have never imagined because you've never done any swimming before this. So you learned how to swim only to do the Ironman. So that itself was a major achievement. But you jumped in and then we said, oh, you're going to take at least about 20, 25 minutes. So, you know, we'll go out, get a coffee, come back and wait for you on the finish line. And the time just kept going on and we just didn't see you. And it almost reached a point where we were getting worried and we were like, where the hell is this guy? Where is he gone? He's not even a swimmer. Now he's swimming in the ocean. I hope everything is okay. And then we saw you, your orange cap bobbing up and down between the, you know, the waves and we were completely relieved. But of course, as you walked out, you looked at the time and you knew that you had missed the time. And of course, you were disappointed as expected. But the older mother would have probably carried that for the whole day for even the next week. And we were just talking amongst friends saying, Are yaar, uska swim nahi hua, ab to sham ko party nahi hoegi, ab to hum kahi bhi nahi ja sakte. We will just have to be and take care of him and make sure that he's doing okay. Which was of course a priority for us. We wanted to be there for you. But it's just the way you showed up. But you felt bad for some time. And I know we were there in that room and you were like, damn, I missed this. I should have been better. But very, very quickly you moved into, hey, let's go see our other friend who's running the Iron Man. Let's go root for him. And we had a lovely evening. Now, this side of you, I could have never imagined. So tell me a little bit more about that Iron Man journey. And then, of course, I want to talk about Goa, where you were a star. Uh, but I will let you take that and talk about that as well. 
So, um, the Iron Man 70.3 in uh, Dubai, I think that has been one of the most telling moments for me as a validation for what meditation can do. That was all about mental health. Uh, you've already given a great introduction to it, but let me add a little bit more. This is something that I've talked about in some of my motivational work that I do with my own staff members. Uh, just the beginning of this new fiscal year, April, we did something called Bharat Darshan where I traveled to a few cities and we spent time with all of the sales leaders. 400-500 log total in various locations. So before I came on stage, everyone talked about the specifics of doing business, what do you want to sell, how do you want to sell, blah, blah, blah. I would come in and chat as a closure to uh, with some stuff about change and transformation. So one of the themes, part of my you know, presentation was about this. So uh, I also shared some data that as prep for this 70.3 in Dubai, I uh, ran 3,000 kilometers, swam 100 odd kilometers, biked four or 5,000 kilometers. It's a lot of work. And it's a lot of grueling work. Just endurance sports is tough. It's emotionally tough. It's physically tough. You are always in pain. You are always sore. You have no life. You can't eat garbage. If you drink too much, you screw up your workout. It's just a lot of discipline for someone who's not going to the Olympics. Someone who's not doing it professionally. So it takes a lot. So that is one context. Number two, very important that I want to remind you. Even though you are not as active on Insta, I don't know if you know, but I was very, very public about sharing my training journey. Every day, I said, don't jinx I said, I don't know I share It's therapy for me. At the end of the day, to maybe have a tear in the eye and say, man, I am so exhausted, but I'm okay. I want to share it. All year, I shared this and I didn't know, I actually didn't realize, I will have 4 followers how many people were so deeply invested in my journey? I, like even now, sometimes I don't realize how people get invested in my journey online. But people were deeply invested. And all of them only wanted one thing, to see me at the finish line and celebrate. In their own way, I was like a proxy for them. You know, yeah. they just wanted to celebrate. Yeah. So that's the context of my own training, but also these other folks. And then this happens. Um, two minutes into my swim, and it's a long swim. It's 1.9 kilometers is a long swim, open water. Two minutes into the swim, I knew I was in trouble. My breathing was off. Everything was off. I had two choices. Get out of the water and be DQ'd or do what you can and try and finish in under one hour, 10 minutes, which you know I didn't do. So that's not a DQ. It's a DNF. Did not finish. Now, what happens with that with Ironman is if you don't finish any leg, you can't do the others. So the swim is the shortest leg. It's 1.9K. So as a result of me missing that, I couldn't bike. So that's 5,000 kilometers of biking gone. And I can't run and I'm a runner. And what a lot of people don't know is when I came out of the water and I sat in the transition area to change from my wetsuit to my bike, somebody came and told me, you need to hurry. So I was hurrying up. And then five minutes, three minutes later, a local Emirati official came and said, we need your timing chip back, which you wear around your ankle. I said, why? They said, you are a DNF. You missed the cut. And I just looked at him. And then he looked at me and he said, your friends are waiting. You need to, get up. You need to exit the course. So I said, but someone just told me that I can bike and run. He said, I'm sorry. Iron Man rules permit you from carrying on. You are... Those friends were us. <laughs> so yeah. I uh, picked up my bike, picked up my running bag, and I walked over to you guys. I was very disappointed. But let me play this out to you if I was not a meditator. If I was not a meditator, apart from disappointment, there would have been a lot of anger, number one. Number two, a very big feeling, very big feeling, I don't deserve this. You know why? Because the ego says, Maine itni bike chalai hai, itna swim kiya hai, itna run kiya hai, I'm entitled to better. 
entitlement and ego go hand in hand okay so you feel the sense of entitlement mere sath kaisa ho sakta hai now this is all me then the thought comes oh my god ye instagram wale this is a family podcast so i'll restrain my language but or maybe i shouldn't right no go for it <laughs> my my instagram fam are so invested और बोलेंगे इसलिए हमने इस चूतिए को फॉलो किया है <laughs> एक साल से लगा हुआ है ये बुढ़ा इसके लिए सो दिस होल थॉट ऑफ वो क्या कहेंगे इज ओवर पावरिंग एंड इट क्रश इज यू बिकॉज यू हैव नो कंट्रोल ऑन व्हाट समवन मे थिंक वन आउट ऑफ हंड्रेड पीपल मे थिंक अरे यार हो जाता है नाइनटी नाइल से यार तू तो बड़ा फुद्दू निकला ऑल ऑफ दिस हैपन्स एंग बिटनेस देन यू वॉन्ट टू ब्लेम समवन How can you blame you? वो तो बहुत बाद में आएगा ना You just want to blame. ये नहीं हुआ वो नहीं हुआ करंट ज्यादा थे टाइट बुरा था ये हो गया जेली फिश ने काट लिया हंड्रेड अदर थिंग्स एंड ऑल ऑफ दिस टेक सो मच टाइम यू नेवर लुक एट यू फिर कोच पे ब्लेम आएगा कि तूने मुझे हंड्रेड किलोमीटर में से नाइन्टी नाइन किलोमीटर पुल में कराया ये नहीं एवरी थिंग इज एवरी वन फॉल्ट नॉट माइन क्यों मैंने तो ट्रेनिंग कर ली इंस्टेड मेडिटेशन टीच इज यू टू लेट गो Accept things as they are, not as how you want them to be. This too shall pass. The fundamental part of vipassana is this too shall pass. For me, that took a couple of minutes. I'm not Buddha. I could not be detached completely from the outcome, but I was very proud of the fact of where my meditation has taken me. I could not have faked it with you guys. Kab tak fake karta tha yar. You can't. Too close to fake it. You cannot. You are just right there. How can you fake it? Done. And that night we went out. We partied. I danced. There's a reel on that. Yes. That I posted. I don't know if you know. Twelfth of March, I had already pre-decided a triathlon party at Kailin with a hundred people. people couldn't believe i'm still going to have the party i said of course i'm going to have the party yaar what happened that day doesn't take away from my training it doesn't take away that i did all i could nahi ho paya nahi ho paya i accept nahi ho paya does that make me a lesser human being no if you think i'm a lesser human being that's up to you i don't think i am because i didn't quit i did my best i had that party on 12th of march we had a great party I cannot tell you the love that I got on Insta. I posted all the screenshots of the DMs that I got. People were in disbelief. They could not understand how it is possible that I can be so relaxed and okay about it. Now what a lot of people don't know is the next day or two days after, I went back to that beach and went into the water with Pankaj. Pankaj was outside my coach, Pankaj Dhiman. And I went in and I told him I said Pankaj, I figured out I am not comfortable in the open water. The only way I can get comfortable is repetition. What does meditation teach you? You have to change. A non-meditator will say the ocean has to change. Ocean will be the ocean, boss. Open water will be the open water. You have to change. So that was a huge thing for me, and it taught me, oh my God! While I may not have a six-pack to show it. but there's a lot of neuroplasticity that's happened inside me a lot of changes have have happened inside me that automatically i did not feel disappointment shame anger guilt bitterness none of that all i felt was i've got to come back mujhe wapas aake isko chapter ko close karna padega yaar i can't leave it unfinished because it's not like i have a cardiac problem or it's not like i'm allergic to salt water it's not any of that and that's what i did in goa i came back uh, this was march november 13th i became an ironman 70.3 finisher yeah, yeah. and thank you and the most beautiful part of that race was if you ask me which was the easiest part of your three segments it was the swim the swim took me 52 minutes instead of an hour and 10 ka cut off the bike killed me because goa was hot and humid and the run destroyed me as it's meant to the swim was the easiest and goa waters have jellyfish why because i did what i needed to do i worked on my weakness 
my weakness looking here so vipashna was huge with this pragya and uh, i felt very very proud of me uh, for dealing with it the way i did and then when i shared this on insta so five or six people wrote to me saying we've had the same experience with open water someone in turkey someone somewhere else and we were so crushed we didn't even want to train we felt so ashamed thank you thank you for letting us know that it's okay it's part of life you know we are very hard on ourselves sometimes pragya absolutely we are very hard on ourselves meditation teaches us forgiveness not to all of you wo to baad mein aate hai na forgive yourself पहले अपने आप को क्षमा करना पड़ेगा ना इट्स ओके आई एम इम्परफेक्ट आई एम फ्लॉड आई एम नॉट बुद्धा आई फोगिव माई सेल्फ नाउ आई विल गेट बेटर वेन यू डोंट फोगिव योर सेल्फ यू हैव नो अबिलिटी टू फोगिव अदर्स वेन यू हैव नो अबिलिटी टू नॉट बी एंग्री एट योर सेल्फ यू लूज द एबिलिटी टू नॉट बी एंग्री एट अदर्स सो इट टॉट मी दैट आई हैव बिल्ट दैट अबिलिटी टू फोगिव माई सेल्फ आई हैव बिल्ट दैट अबिलिटी टू से it's okay mother you are still mother and that brings me to one point which you talked with money as well lot of people start identifying themselves with external things kyunki mere paas 100 crore bank mein hai main ameer aadmi hu that's my identity now mere insta mein 1 million followers hain main influencer hu that is my identity meditation teaches you that's not your identity that's very transient that money can go i know i personally know someone who's now bankrupt because 80% of his savings was in crypto the guy is destroyed us mein rehta hai bande ki phati hui he's i no idea because his whole mind scape was i am a almost a billionaire because i have this much now he has nothing but nobody can take this away from you they can't take your gratitude your compassion your followers ja sakte hain but apne aap se to unfollow nahi ho sakte ho na yaar so that's very very important who you think you are whether it's internal or external meditation doesn't say garibi mein raho it doesn't say ki tum bhikkhu ban ke bhik mango no do what you want but understand what that is wo bahar ki cheeze hain i am very aggressive with work i i i want to be number 1 in the industry i want our company to be worth 1000 2000 3000 crores that's fine but that still is not me because one day that can go One day someone can take it over, yar. God knows. One day my CEO might resign. I can't do that. I still am who I am. That's very important to be able to separate this from all of this. This meditation is helpful, yar. You know, so true because you know, in my journey, I had a similar experience, and you know, you have those moments in your life where you think like, why me? Why is this only happening to me? And you know, you have your shoulders down. And for me, it was in my mid twenties, so you're just sort of starting out, right? And I wrote this long email, uh, you know, to my global guide, crying and fifty pages of, you know, this has happened to me and that's happened to me and my life is crumbling. And he just wrote back only one thing, which was, "There's only acceptance. There are no whys." And that, to me, every moment of my life, even today, keeps unraveling what that means for me. I think one was that, and the second bit, which you were saying about. what you are inside does not that no one can take away and i remember in a conversation you know i was sharing with him at that time i used to play professional golf and you know things were good so i said you no know, i won this and i have won that tournament and i'm doing okay but i'm still not getting that anchor i'm still not feeling happy inside and he said that's because life is not about having it's about becoming and to your point about you. yeah just oh, completely nice. detaching yourself from the things we identify ourselves to um to actually saying i am who i am and this is who i am and this is the strength that i have and no matter what changes around me this is not going to be taken away and that i think that's what meditation has done for me it's my anchor yes and you know the very definition of an anchor pragya is in a rough sea it holds the ship to a position इधर उधर द डेल्टा फ्रॉम द मीडियन इज नॉट वेरी हाई इट्स देयर दैट्स वॉट एन एंकर डज आई हैव रियलाइज इन लाइफ टू बी हैप्पी 
यू हैव टू से अ लॉट ऑफ नोज बहुत नो बोलना पड़ता है एज अ रनर यू देर इज़ नो रनर इन द वर्ल्ड एंड डोरेंस रनर हु वुड नॉट लुक अप टू एल्यूट किप चोगे एल्यूट किप चोगे इज सपोजली द ग्रेटेस्ट ऑफ ऑल टाइम द रीजन आई लुक अप टू हिम इज इज नॉट ओनली अ सुप्रीम एथलीट his mind his humility is crazy he's like the roger federer mm. of of you know you have you have the jokovic he's done he's arguably better than federer because he's won more majors but he's not as likable federer is just someone kipchoge crazy humility kenyan down to earth incredible guy run a full marathon in under 2 hours all of that he had a recent uh, podcast with dr chatterjee i follow them both on instagram and dr chatterjee asked him what is your definition what is a key ingredient for success so elite kupcho ke say the first thing is you have to have a high dose of vitamin n i said what is vitamin n he said the ability to say no now when you're not a meditator and you're not sure of yourself why do you say yes wo kya kahenge what will that person think of me if i was to decline Now, I'll give you a great example. Let's say hypothetically, this was a podcast. It's being done by you. That's great. But it was about a topic that I do not resonate with at all. With all my love and respect, I would say no to you, because my promise on social and to me in my life is I have to be authentic. Now I can only say no to you with the belief I am who I am. I'm not doing this to hurt you. If you are hurt today one day you will come around and say mother you were right but if i preoccupy preoccupy myself with hey bhagwan pragya kya bolegi usne to ye socha tha madhur nahi na kar diya tu to bada beshram all of this happens that's not what a meditator does he looks in mera intent kya is my intent to hurt you no my intent is to protect my identity my identity is to be authentic hence i'm sorry pragya this is not something i'm okay to talk about it's not something i want to do please respect that some day you will maybe meditation teaches you how to say no no gives you the ability to get stronger you become a stronger person when you have the ability to say no meditation has taught me that and you know i say so many no's every day in my life uh two weeks ago there was a dinner where you know you got caught up and as sad as i was to have been able to miss you i didn't stay now हाइपोथेटिकली यू कैन से कितना बेशरम इंसान है मिलते हैं नहीं डिनर पे आया आधे घंटे मेरे लिए वेट नहीं कर पाया नहीं कर पाया यार मैं अगले दिन चार बजे मेरी रन थी मुझे उठना था आई हैव टू प्रोटेक्ट माई सेल्फ आई लव यू बट आई एम गोइंग आई लेफ्ट आई डेंट मीट एनी ऑफ दैम मैं क्या कर सकता हूँ यार आई एम कंफर्टेबल विद दैट डजन मेक मी अ बैड ह्यूमन बींग इफ यू अगेन ऑल रोड लीड टू रोम तुम जो सोचना है सोचो आई एम क्लियर दैट्स वाई आई से मेडिटेशन इज अ वेरी सेल्फिश थिंग you only do it for you but out of selfishness comes selflessness oh absolutely and that brings me to the first point that you had made which is why you surround yourself with people who understand that correct so for me when you do that it's not even i don't even double think right i i know that is what mother is going to do because if i was in your place and i had to get up and meditate at 4 am that's exactly what i would do yes. so there is no there is there isn't a iota of doubt in my mind my universe has shrunk a lot that way by these knows it shrunk a lot to the type of people who i respect and because of my behavior and action they respect me do i digress of course we are not buddha we have but they understand that this is a digression the exception is not the rule they understand that and that's okay yeah but it also means that the people who you are with are extremely valuable to you and you are again there also making a very thoughtful choice of where you want to invest your feelings your time and all of that which i think a lot of us need to learn because brutal prioritization is the only way we can be good at what we want to do because the sense now is i want to be good at everything but it's not possible so you need to sort of say no like you said and also have this trade off in mind which is you know what you gain on the swings you lose on the roundabouts you can't have everything um but this was great daga some really really incredible stories that you have shared and really opened up and been so vulnerable so i really appreciate that 
the other common factor that i want to go into a little bit is also your personal life right your 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 emotional self your emotional being and i know that you know there are difficult times and challenging times that you're going through and the the madhur that i know earlier again would have taken this and felt as if it's a personal vendetta that someone is trying to fix with you or almost as if to i would say settle scores but the version i see of you going through this separation and this divorce of a relationship that you've had for most part of your adult life i have actually seen you become stronger i have seen you become even a better version of yourself and through that it has inspired me as well to dig deeper and find the courage so tell me a little bit more about this very difficult time but how is meditation how is your marathon how is friends how a family your instagram family as well really been the support to you and how have you also opened yourself and been vulnerable to accept that love because lots of times people care for us but we don't allow them to do that because we are so stuck up in ourselves but you have really opened your heart and your soul for that to happen so this is a this is a tricky topic it's tricky not because i'm hesitant to talk about it it's tricky because it's very complicated it's exceptionally complicated um so i'll i'll i will try to be as clear as i can but forgive me if i am not as clear as some of my other thoughts um i think let's talk about how have i dealt how have i dealt with this i'll go back to the iron man experience for a minute um from a point of view of feeling defeat feeling crushed that was very crushing and what i've often said on instagram in some of my reels and my stories is one of the greatest things about discipline and having a routine is you have something to fall back on no matter how life is your life is great amazing you have a routine your life sucks you have a routine that's a great thing about it people don't understand this it intuitively you don't understand that a routine is an anchor so when the separation happened with someone who i was in a relationship in totality for 30 years married to for 23 years if i did not have a routine chances are i would be derailed and the next thing that would definitely have happened is i would have chosen things that would give me instant gratification because you're hurting and hurt can manifest in many ways anger bitterness self doubt you play the victim so many things happen so what do you do you look for distractions to make you feel better then now in the ideal world a run or meditation should make you feel better but for someone like me who's lived on beer for most of their life that's easy all of the people i don't hang out with they are one call away and they'll be like what daga ne beer ke liye call kiya boss drop the world and go and drink with us you know that <laughs> we'll move on from beer to some other stuff that's all comes easy to me you get derailed now what happens you start feeling good you've escaped isko vipassana mein palayan kehte hain ki aap bhag chuke ho i'm very lucky i'm very grateful i'm very blessed that i have a water tight routine unless i'm sick and ordered bed rest i will follow that routine come hell or high water so i brought up iron man because two days after that i was back at it a day after my partner left me i was back at doing what i do i meditated i ran i biked i did everything was i sad absolutely was i disappointed absolutely would i cry while running or biking absolutely but i was still doing that now guess what that was doing it was making me stronger versus going out and getting hammered which would not make me stronger it would make me feel great that is instant gratification so routine helped me immensely number 1 number 2 going back to meditation and the ego 
as your ego dissipates, as your ego dilutes, it's easier to forgive. It's easier to let go. I let go very easily. I let go very easily. I forgive. Theek hai. It's okay. This had to happen. And third point, very important with meditation, especially with meditation, meditation teaches you the real meaning of karma. Theoretically, everyone understands karma. Jaisa karoge, waisa bharoge. But they have a disclaimer to it. As long as mere saath achcha ho, to mein karma samaj sakta ho. Because when some crap hits you, the first thing you think is, maine kya kiya yeh sab cheez ke liye? I was very good to that person. Maine us bhikari ko paise diye, maine usko wo kiya, maine wo kiya. Yeh kyon ho raha hai? People don't understand. Karma doesn't work in a linear fashion. Kal yeh hua, to aaj yeh hoga. You may have done something, if you believe in past life, three lives ago, you may have done something ten years ago. You may have done something you feel is insignificant. Like I'll tell you something very simple. Many people may not agree with this, but this Vipassana, one of the five precepts is no killing. Hmm. Since 2016, I've not killed a mosquito. I haven't. That doesn't mean you're like, Mujhe aake dengu de do. but I don't kill. I will do whatever. I, I just don't direct. That's the intent. Ab kisi ne spray kar diya, mar gaya, alag baat hai. But I don't kill. Because Vipassana says, even when you kill that mosquito, You've taken a life away. You may have to pay for it nine years later. But you don't understand that. So people don't understand karma because there's no science. There's no logic. I did that, that debit came, so this credit came. The general concept is, in, 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 in karma, the, the big concept is, anything and everything that happens to you, you deserve. Very difficult for people to understand this. Easy to agree? Supremely difficult to understand. Because you get sick, Someone close to you dies. You are in total grief. Someone like me comes and says, you deserve it. The guy wants to give you a... He's like, Saleh, what the fuck is wrong with you? What do you mean? Yes, you do. You may not understand it, but you do. So very quickly I understand, whatever happened, whoever left me, I deserved it. Why? I don't know. Going back to what your uh, mentor or whoever said, it's about acceptance. I will never know why I deserved it. And if I keep trying to find out, I will only make myself angry and bitter. So I have to be rooted in the belief, I deserve it. It had to happen this way. So now what do I do? I live my life, I forgive, I go with my routine. That is what helped me. Again, meditation, acceptance. Are there days where I'm sad? Of course. Who wants to lose a partner after 30 years? Nobody. But I deserve it. So does everyone else. When you firmly believe you deserve what happens to you, it's very liberating. The opposite of that is entitlement. Ye mere saath kaise ho sakta hai? Main to ye hoon. Doesn't work that way, yaar. Yeah. And that's a tough one for the ego to understand. It's very, very tough. Even Kipchoge, he ran his first Boston Marathon. Everyone expected him to break the record. He stood eighth. His answer is always the same. Sport teaches you humility. Sport teaches you acceptance. I accept. I'll go back, train harder and come back. I accept. So as disappointing as it was to me, I accepted it. And it's my great privilege. It's my great honor to have had Vipassana in my life. Because had I not accepted it, had I been very upset, I would have lost my sleep. And the people who would have been impacted the most are my parents. My father's 85, my mom's 80, my father's hypertensive, my mom is a cancerian, which means out under the shell, she is dead meat. No matter what she says, she would have died. It took me five months for her to see how peaceful mother is for her to sleep again. Because you know, old school, beta yeah. akele ho, all this. Yeah. A big fat Greek wedding movie, hai na? A big fat Indian wedding, hoti? whatever said and done, yeah? yes. whether I like it or not, yes. that's how it would have been. Yeah. Thousand, two, the blah blah blah. There were 30 people in my wedding, and 29 of them were from her side. Only my dad was on my side. No, none of my friends, nobody. This is the mom I had to tell on a video call that I'm now alone. Just imagine that moment in my life. Yeah. That night I sat in meditation, I cried, but I reminded myself, Madhur, you deserve this. You deserve it. Make peace with it. The longer you take to make peace with it, the longer you are going to be in trouble. 
probably my favorite saying in the world which has really hit me because i've understood it after vipassana is a saying by this japanese author who's written a book called what i talk about when i talk about running hmm usme ek line hai pain is inevitable suffering is optional suffering happens when you don't embrace pain suffering happens when you want pain to go away pain will go away when it goes away you have the option not to suffer if you ask me if you were still with the person who left you would your relationship with your parents be this way no do i love because i loved them less no i didn't have the eyes to see that i need to do this वो रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी दिख नहीं रही थी मुझे मास था एक आगे एक फसाद था शी वॉज डूइंग इट एक वेल था एक वेल था वॉज वेरी कन्वीनियंट विच सन विल नॉट गो एंड टेल इज मॉम एवरी वन मॉम यू आर इरिटेटिंग मैनी और कर सकता इट्स ओके दैट्स नॉर्मल यू हैव टू एक्सेप्ट दैट ऑल्सो सो दैट्स जिस समथिंग आई वॉन्ट टू हाईलाइट दैट एवरी सिचुएशन पेन इज इनएविटेबल सफरिंग इज ऑप्शनल and what you said about presence that presence is the biggest gift we can give people we spend time with i mean it's it's just beautiful in that moment when you are 100% with them you feel that deep connection and then you create those epic warm moments that you can think back no matter where you are and feel that warmth in your heart absolutely. and be okay with it and everything is fine absolutely pragya you know i again intellectually everyone understands this in, in intellectually everyone understands regret is stuff live in the moment you will never get this moment back we've all read books and theories and been told this by a therapist if you've gone to therapy sab samajhte hain log aur jab aap 11 ghante meditation karte ho na aur aana paan karte ho to stay in the moment it teaches you that uska anubhav kar rahe ho so now i am understanding that this is the moment i have with my mom and dad i am very alive to the fact vipassana also teaches you bolte hain jeene ki kala hai aur marne ki kala hai they say vipassana is not only an art of living it's an art of dying you cannot understand how to die if you don't know how to live so i hope i don't understand i don't know this because you know it will happen one day i don't know when i don't know how i'll respond but i would love to be at a point that when i lose one or both of my parents which i know i will i can be calm about it and say i have no regrets i did the best i can versus oh my god main itna busy tha main wo kar raha tha maine ye bhi nahi kiya wo bhi nahi kiya i understand that now i understand that i cannot control how long they will live i can only control what time i want to spend want to deeply spend and how you want to spend it how you want to spend it ye mere control mein hai oh absolutely and i think for me like you very rightly pointed out meditation has been this bridge between a lot of stuff that we intellectualize and read about and to what we actually experience because once you experience and you know it there is no unknowing that's it you have it and you've got it and now you can live it because you've understood it it's yours to keep so. absolutely vipassana mein again ek ek pravachan mein bolte hain goinka ji who brought vipassana from burma to to uh, to india you know on on if we ever come to it on another episode or part, podcast we'll go a little bit deeper into the vipassana fundamentals but one of the things there are many things about vipassana that is that has resonated with me which is why i've stuck to it i am that way not a seeker i don't seek 100 avenues there are a lot of personalities no judgment where they'll do something and they'll like isse zyada kuch aur hona chahiye iske aage kuch hai i am not like that hmm. i'd rather go deeper into that one thing when it comes to spirituality so like when you knew me if you talk to me about spirituality i'd say bro you take this spirituality and shove it so far up your ass that it never comes out in front of me again yeah now I took the deepest plunge it's like the marina trench of spirituality which is vipassana 10 din ka 11 din ka to vipassana mein kehte hain ki hum mante bahut kuch hai jante bahut kam hai hmm 
मानने और जानने में बहुत अंतर होता है विच इज एग्जैक्टली वॉट यू सेड वी इंटेलेक्चुअलाइज अ लॉट सिद्धांतों के तौर पे हम बहुत कुछ समझ लेते हैं अनुभव नहीं कर पाते हैं ये जो 11 घंटे बैठते हैं हम ये अनुभव ही तो कर रहे हैं पर वो भी अनुभव का लाइक आई एक हैंगओवर होता है एक डेढ़ दो महीने बाद खत्म हो जाएगा मैं प्रैक्टिस करता हूं नौ बजे सुबह माई एंटायर स्टाफ इन माई हाउस ऑल ऑफ देम वॉलेंटरिली कम इन टू द रूम एंड वी डू आना पान देर इज अ मुस्लिम देर आर टू क्रिश्चियंस देर सम वन हिंद सम बिहारी सब सब आते हैं Why do they come? Ten, twelve minutes. It's not because I'll mark them absent if they don't. It's mandatory for them to learn. It's not mandatory for them to come. They come because unko shanti milti hai. So, it's just it's very important to know that while meditation is a journey, the start of it can be very small. The start of it can be very small. It doesn't have to be gyara din ka course, gyara ghante. No, yar, it's it's everyone isn't built for it. It's not a good or bad. I'm not better than you because I do 11 hours a day. I meditate, you meditate. But do something that forces you to look inward. Yeah. बहुत विपश्चना करने के बाद when you're around senior विपश्चीज, you're talking, teachers भी होते हैं वो बोलते हैं you know भगवान के physical design में एक ही flaw है. हमारी आंखें हमेशा इस तरफ होती हैं. We are naturally always looking this way. We only close our eyes to sleep. Here, you're closing your eyes not to sleep, but because irrelevant. Yeah. Irrelevant. Paristhiti versus manusthiti. Paristhiti hai. Ye drama chalte rahega. Ham apne manusthiti ko dekh rahe. This allows you a lot of stuff. Otherwise, you're just always trapped in ye, wo, ye, wo, garmi, sardi. गुस्सा था एवरी थिंग देर हम यहाँ आ रहे ऑनेस्टली दिस इज आई थिंक द बेस्ट प्लेस टू रैप दिस अप बिकॉज दिस इज द मैसेज आई वुड लाइक एवरी वन टू टेक अवे विद आफ्टर दिस कॉन्वर्सेशन और थ्रू दिस कॉन्वर्सेशन विच इज जस्ट मेरीटेट ट्राई इट एंड स्पेंड योर टाइम इन योर इनर जर्नी एंड द स्टोरीज एंड एनेकडोट्स एंड the authenticity and the honesty with which you have shared your life journey madhur i really appreciate it and of course i know you well but still this conversation has opened up so many much not so many so much more for me and for myself and for my own journey so thank you really for sharing all of this and thank you for your time well, and thank you for giving me this opportunity uh pragya and i'm very happy to wrap it up with this with this message uh a last point that i'd like to add Because whenever we talk about meditation, हमारे corporate office में 110 सौ दस लोग हैं मेडिटेशन के लिए तीस से चालीस लोग आते हैं अदर्स डोंट कम अगेन इज वॉल्ट्री आई एव ऑफन आई एम नॉट समन हुए लास्ट पीपल तुम क्यों मेडिटेशन नहीं करते हो जिस विपक्षना डजेंट वर्क दैट वे इट्स नॉट अ कल्ट वेयर योर गोल इज टू गेट मेम्बर्स एक तो कमर्शियल कुछ ही नहीं hmm. You can never charge for it. There's no vested interest. Just like the school of meditation, you follow. So I often think, I think that why do people not want to meditate? I think this is something important in whichever episode that you highlight. Seven years has taught me something. I think it's a very important truth. There may be other truths, but this is a truth. And a truth is, people don't want to meditate because they think they can't meditate. why can't they meditate because they are very aware that they are all over the place they are very aware that they have lot of trouble sitting and focusing and then they make a lot of assumptions a big assumption is i must have a blank mind or kisi ne koi kung fu movie ya shaolin movie dekh li hogi to bolta hai empty your mind bruce lee ka quote aa jayega i must flow like water many assumptions come basically they've killed the journey before starting by saying ye to main kar hi nahi sakta that's one very important thing that is a reality that anyone watching should know it's okay to feel like you can't meditate it's normal so i tell people like that 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 is exactly like saying saying i don't want to meditate because i'm all over the place is exactly like saying i don't want to brush my teeth because my dental hygiene is poor 